Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, we're going to call the meeting of the Monroe County Council to order for Tuesday, November 15th. And I'm going to do a roll call because we've got some people online and some people not here and some people. I, anyway, we'll do a roll call. So, uh, Councillor Iverson. Here. Councillor Munson. Here. Councillor Deckard. Here. Councillor Crossley. Here. Councillor McKim. Here remotely. And uh, Councillor Hawk. I'm, I'm here. I don't have the video on because I don't want anybody to see how bad I look. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Councillor Hawk is feeling under the weather. She's here remotely. Um, I think that probably means I can't vote, but. Uh, All right. Sorry. What did you say, Pia? I think Ms. Hawk was asking if um, in order to vote, she would need her video on. That, that's true. That's true. So you can't vote. Um, and that's, that is up to you. Um, now we will move to item two, which is our Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next on our agenda mm -hmm. is our time for a public comment for items that are not already listed on the agenda. Um, there'll be a time limit of three minutes per speaker. If anyone would like to make comment, go ahead and um, come up to the podium or raise your hand on Zoom. Okay, I see no public comment. We'll move then to the adoption of our agenda. Uh, does anyone wish to add or remove an item from tonight's agenda? No, okay. Then we um, will go ahead and proceed, consider it approved. Now we have department updates. Uh, do we have any departments that would like to make an update to us at this time? Auditor Smith, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. Uh, I wanted to um, do a department update and uh, let you know uh, that um, we've already processed all the election workers' pays, and uh, that will be out really quickly. And so I know that that's always a concern after an election, uh, not just getting election workers, but retaining them. So I thought you guys might like to hear some good news and to let you know that uh, that that has already happened. I'm very appreciative um, that my staff worked really hard on that and um, that we are really quick, trying to quickly pay everyone who is good enough to come and help us. So I just want to touch base and let you know that. Thank you. Are there any other department updates? All right. Now we have council liaison updates. Are there any updates from council members? Nothing? All right, um, I guess I would just uh, mention that uh, the community justice response committee has their next meeting uh, this Monday. And so almost a week from today, and uh, that's at 4.30, 4.30 to six um, here in the Nat U Hill room. And those meetings are open to the public. So I just wanted to make sure that folks were aware of that. Um, if there are no more uh, updates from council, we will move to item seven. 
And that is the presentation of the Food and Beverage Tax Advisory Commission Annual Report. And I'd like to invite Councillor Munson to give a pr brief presentation of that report. And um, the floor is yours. Thank you. I have the, the distinct honor or something else of being chair of the Food and Beverage Tax Advisory Commission for another year. And <clears throat> this last year was not a busy year at all for us in terms of a commission. It was a very busy year for people uh, dining and enjoying beverages in Monroe County. So we had, uh, we had a successful year in terms of making up for um, two years of a pandemic which certainly curtailed the revenue from this tax. <clears throat> this tax will, uh, has been promised by the city of Bloomington uh, to be devoted to expansion of the convention center. And that discussion is ongoing. Uh, the, the funding is there and it will be available whenever a plan is developed. And for uh, the report itself, I will invite the public to find a copy for your information uh, on the county uh, website. It is, <clears throat> you can find it through the county council webpage or you can find it through the boards and commissions uh, webpage. So it is available for everybody. And it's, uh, it's a brief and very dry report that just shows uh, the amount of revenue that has come in and uh, where expenditures have been made. And I think for the council members, it is in your packet. So I would answer any questions if you have them. Um, I know the, re the, the committee um is made up of the very specific appointees is there still a vacancy yes and i should tell you who sits on this uh commission and what the commission does other than approve an annual report <clears throat> it is comprised of um the president of the board of commissioners uh the mayor a representative from the county council which is uh yours truly a representative of the city council, which this year is Mr. Dave Rollo, <clears throat> and uh, two members uh, presently of who manage or own restaurants. And uh, representative to you is One World Catering and Lenny's and Nick's English Hut. So certainly we pick very good representatives to to begin our work with this commission. We uh, have a vacancy now uh, and have for the last year, and we are looking for uh, an establishment in the county uh, to, uh, to fill this vacancy. And do you know there aren't that many uh, restaurants that are, uh, or other facilities that are located just in the county and not in the city itself, but we wanted to to balance this between the city and the county. So please, please find out more information if you are interested. And I'm always happy to answer questions. Uh, are there any questions from council? All righty then. Thank you very much for that report. Appreciate it. Um, we will move then to uh, the Board of Commissioners, item eight. Council, I move to approve the commissioner's request for an additional appropriation in fund 100068 general fund commissioners of $2,251 in the services category. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff's not here. We're thrown off with Jeff being remote. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't quick enough on the mute button. Okay, well, whatever will we do? You're missed already. <laughs> Welcome, Miss Purdy. 
Thank you. Um, yes, I'm here tonight um, requesting just a, a slight um, additional in this particular um, account. The Extension Office is um, affiliated with Purdue University, and as a result of that, we have requirements um, that um, for leasing of technical wear that they that they are required to use. And what's actually happened is in years past. This has always been there, um, at least for the past three years. I went back to check and see, because I'm like, where did this come from? Um, and we had had money in other lines that we were able to make a transfer um, to do that with. But however, this time we are um, cutting it pretty close to the bone. So um, I'm here at requesting this additional to um, just make up for the slight difference that we have. Are there um, any questions from council on this appropriation? Um, any public comment? All righty then, can we have a roll call vote? Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Motion passed. And we have item B. Council, I move to approve the commissioner's request for an additional appropriation in fund 1000-0068 general fund commissioners of $25,000 in the services category. Second. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, thank you. Um, we are presently um, finding that in this, this account line, we are currently in the negative about $20,000 um, at this point in time. And uh, the 25,000 will help get us through hopefully the end of the year. Now, what um, has happened is we have paid for appraisal services out of this um, line um, specific to the convention center. So I'm going to be asking to get on the fab tax um, agenda to see if they would approve the use of our um, food and beverage funds for that purpose. All right. Um, are there any questions from council members on this? Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Jeff, oh, please feel free to say something oh. if I don't notice your hand. I'm sorry. Sorry. I just see that the um, narrative refers to the, um, the cleanup of encampments as being one reason why this line is so depleted and then goes on to say that the intention is to request FabTAC to, um, to reimburse. But you're, you're saying the request to FabTAC would only be for the appraisal of county buildings related to the convention center. It doesn't actually have anything to do with the encampments. The encampments oh, is just why the line is, okay. Yeah, yes, I actually, I didn't reference the encampments when I was speaking out loud. It is in the document here. Um, those are costs that we have incurred, but those costs plus the convention center um, expenses that I think that we can um, get reimbursed from from FabTAC, they have they're two very separate things. Um, the only amount we would be requesting would be the cost of the appraisals on the convention center from FabTAC. Okay. Thank you. Uh, about about how I'm sorry. One one follow up about how much has been spent so far uh, this year on convent or on uh, conventions. I'm sorry, on encampment cleanup. Oh, um, I actually can't tell you. Um, I can tell you after after the fact, but I don't have them. I mean, we had two cleanups, and I can't tell you. I can I can go back and look. I don't have that off top of my head. I do okay. think that would be interesting to find out. They were expensive. Yeah, yeah I seem to re remember. So that would be a substantial reason why that line is depleted then. Mm -hmm. Right. It's the need to conduct those cleanups. Okay. Thanks. Any other? Oh, Council Iverson. Uh, Ms. Purdy, as we know that these have been so expensive, is there um, a plan? Um, to prevent encampments going forward? Um, 
guys have all the hard questions this evening. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's that we have any new plans. Um, I am part of a, a group that's at the heading home. And so that's that group is looking at alternatives to, um, for people who are, are sheltering on the street or you know are not not finding shelters. Um, so the community as a whole, I believe, is working on that con that that problem that we have. Um, Monroe County government is doing the best that we can to mark our properties as no trespassing and, and that you can't store your goods or camp there. Um, but um, when people are looking for a place to, to stay, they are inventive and find areas that we did not know until, until it becomes um, generally brought to our attention by the public. That's, that's how it, we've become aware of both of these encampments. And these were both on the west side of town, is that right? Um, other side of the highway, I'm thinking, if I remember correctly. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'm not good with direction, but I do know that one, one was behind um, the at home. Yeah. Yes. One was on the other side of the highway. The one was off uh, Patterson Avenue um, between okay. Cattle and uh, Walnut. Okay. Or not right. Walnut, but second. Yeah. 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 So okay. Behind this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other questions? Is there any public comment on this item? All right. Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Councillor McCam. Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed six to zero. Thank you. And we have uh, another item. Okay. <clears throat> Council, I move to approve the commissioner's request for an additional appropriation in fund 100161, general fund county buildings of 91,000 in the services category. Second. Oh, second. <laughs> we messed without you, Jeff. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is um, this is a significant request. Um, I've looked, went back um, over the last 11 months and we have been expending about $45,000 a month um, on our, all of our buildings, on all of our utilities. And I believe it was last year, maybe the year prior, when we first put the utilities all in one line, um, we had had them broken down by buildings, but now we're able to actually pay it out of one account line and staff is able to identify what building it is. Um, so we can look into our financial software and run a report if we needed to. However, I think it has kind of affected um, how well we have planned or budgeted for, for these expenses. Um, now, what I have done is I've looked at the account and I checked it before I came in here. Um, I think that we could actually reduce our requests from 91 to 86,000. Know, it's not a lot, but. Council, I move to amend my previous motion from $91,000 down to $86,000. Second. Second. <laughs> that was on that. Great. Um, are there any questions about the uh, amendment, the change in the number? Okay. Um, then could we have a roll call vote on that amendment? This is a roll call vote on the amendment to reduce it to 86,000. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Sorry. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor McCann? 
Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Great. So um, are there any questions from council on the original uh, item? Yes. So for now that all the utilities have been wrapped up into one, uh, are, are, has that changed all the calculation of moving funds into the energy conservation non-reverting fund? Or uh, how does that work? The energy conservation fund was um, supplemented by uh, monies that were received when we um, got credits for switching out our LEDs. Um, mm -hmm. There were some other things that happened in which we actually got money back. And that's what went into that fund. I don't believe we are receiving any funds at this point in time. If we find such a program, um, then definitely that's where those funds would have to be deposited back into. Okay. Sorry. And, and then I know in a, a previous GO bond, a general obligation bond, we had asked for estimates or a study on putting solar on a series of county buildings. I believe those estimates have come back. Is that correct? Um, I know that we've gotten the report and that's gone to my maintenance uh, manager and we are still waiting on a report from the um, airport. And I think they were also, there was the airport and then I think there might've been some at parks. However, um, I do know that we have received some of those reports, um, but not the whole, the, the, to the total um, proposal has not been received. Once Excellent. that's received, my understanding is that then we'll put it out for bid. Sure, sure. No, that's that's exciting. I'm glad that uh, we commissioned that study and we're moving forward on putting solar panels on more buildings. I think that's going to definitely impact what we're talking about tonight in the future. Yeah, hopefully. And the, and the um, showers building, I know that we, you know, the, the parking lot there has to be remedied. Um, it's, it's in poor shape. Um, once that's done, we're also thinking about putting in um, covered some covered parking spaces that have the solar panels on the top and then charging stations. And so I think, and also using those for um, uh, lighting mm -hmm. so that we can have most of our lighting be solar powered, obviously backed up by some kind of generator, but yeah, so kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions from council? Um, you had said that that the um, accounting had changed a little bit, and that instead of being separate lines, they're all in one, but you can still dig in and find. Um, but you, I think you mentioned that that sort of affected the budgeting. I, what did you mean by that? I think that it affected um, how I looked at and planned for the following year during our budget process, because um, things were broken up. And then when I'm looking at it at that stage of the game, it's not always, it's earlier in the year. I try to forecast um, for later, but I think that given combining all of them into one account from multiple accounts and going through um, 20 and 21, where we had, we were not quite as back as we are now that I, I missed some potential increases that um, I probably should have caught. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was going to ask this. I mean, is there a chance that some of this is cost going up? On, oh, on definitely. Um, I, I'd like to actually look into that and be able to yeah. tell you definitively, but sure. yeah. Well, no, I, I, I was going to, when I looked at that, I was like, oh yeah, this is just, you know, we've had additional gas lines uh, or gas, gas appropriations. I could see a cost thing. One thing that I, I sort of understand what you're saying on the, the from many lines down to one issue, uh, criticism I always used to have a people soft is that you're paying bills, but sometimes you're not seeing the narrative you used to see when you're out with your old school ledger. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of where software, which is supposed to help you, doesn't always help you. So that's thank a very you. Excellent way to describe it, yeah. All right, any other questions? Any public comment on this item? Okay, seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Munson? 
Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor McKim? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we now move to item nine on our agenda. Council, I move to approve the legal department's request for an additional appropriation in fund 100277 general fund legal of $25,000 in the services category. Second. <laughs> Sorry, Mad Madam President, I'm gonna be abstaining from this vote. Okay. Just to avoid potential appearance of conflict of interest. All right, thank you. Welcome, Mr. Cockrell. Good, good evening, Jeff Cockrell from the legal department. Um, unfortunately, we are here to ask for an additional appropriation. Um, I think that you may have all received an email earlier today to kind of outline some of the cases we're working on and things like that. Uh, the long and the short of it in our litigation line, if you include uh, transfers, um, we had $78,093.75 come in and the same amount go out. And in our litigation deduction, we've had $34,881.26 come in and also go out. Um, we anticipate uh, a, a, some billings for the, I think it's the Houston South case um, of uh, 14,000 for the October building. And they did some additional work in, in November. Um, and it's also some potential buildings billing. And actually, I think the, the Barnes and Thornburg is for the, the Huff case, I apologize. The Eubanks is for the forestry. And I, I think we expect a, some additional in that as well till the end of the year. Plus we are do, dealing with ongoing um, insurance litigation that we do have to pay a deductible amount on. And that's what the, all these expenses go for. Um, if you have any questions, more than happy to answer them. Um, thank you. No. Do you have any questions, Council? Yes, Council. I, I don't have a question, but rather a comment that I was glad to see that costs have been lower on the Houston South. Uh, litigation um, due to factors outside of our control, but nonetheless, it's good to see at this point. I don't expect your comment. Yeah, I, I think it's great the costs are coming in lower, but you know, they're, they're still there. Yeah. Other questions or comments from council? Okay, um, any public comment? Seeing none, uh, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor McKim? Abstain. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed five to zero to one abstain. Thanks, and then we'll move to item B. Council, I move to approve resolution 2022-26A part one, preliminary approval of a tax abatement for Oliver Winery Company Incorporated that reads as follows. The Monroe County Council resolves that the area shown in the attached exhibits, whose address is 200 East Winery Road, Bloomington, Indiana, 47404, in Monroe County, Indiana is hereby preliminary declared an economic revitalization area for five years pursuant to IC 6-1.1-12.1 et al. The attached statement of benefits submitted by Oliver Winery Company Incorporated is now preliminarily approved as set forth in the attached exhibits. Deduction shall be made for, the resolution is blank. I believe that should be five years. A seven. Seven years, pardon me, at the annual rate percentages, percentage indicated addendum A for personnel for personal property improvements presented to the County Council of Monroe County, Indiana, read in full and adopted on the 15th day of November 2022. Second. And, and I'm going to apologize up front. I had submitted that um, prior to the 
regular session and, and things have changed since then, they're actually requesting for the personal property 800% abatement for seven years. And so I, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the, of the background and the, the, you know, kind of where we're at in the process wise, as, as well as give a, a summary report of the EDC uh, meeting and, and what, how they found their recommendations. Why I do that, I would ask uh, if the technical service department would go ahead and promote uh, John Black and Jay Walters, who are the company representatives. They're, they are here um, electronically and, and they'll go through a presentation. Um, from a process standpoint, um, it, it's the same as it's always been in that this would be a preliminary approval now um, that we'd put out a notice and people can go on I think it's to the assessor's office or the auditor's office look at the maps look at the information that they provided um, typically we'll also put that on our website and then notice a public hearing for your December meeting and then have the the part two the final part at that point in time and that's that's when the it would be approved or not so this is preliminary saying, yeah, we've looked at it, we've heard the presentation, and, and we want to go ahead and, and go through the, the rest of the process. Um, this one say, was a unique, a unique uh, request. Um, and, and, I, and I think, judging by some of your faces, the 100% for seven years is a unique request. It's something we, we've never done before. And it's understandable. Um, let me go through the process on how we came to that as part of the request from the company as, and also the EDC recommend, recommendation. Uh, when this was initially requested, it was requested to have a real property tax abatement and a personal property tax abatement. State code, but, but it is for Oliver Winery, who has to have a permit under uh, Indiana Code 7.1, which is the alcohol and tobacco section of the code. In the tax abatement portion of the code, it specifically prohibits issuing a tax abatement for real property for anybody who gets that kind of certification, right? So if they have to get a permit through 7.1, not allowed to have a real property tax abatement on any of the property. So when they made their initial request, the personal property uh, amount for, we had to, it wasn't necessarily the request, but there were a few things in their list of, of uh, personal property that aren't aren't taxable. It was not something that we would collect property tax on. It was web design and those kind of things that are more service and not, not property. So the personal property that we're looking at today is $8.3 million worth of personal property. If we would do it under a standard tax abatement, the, the tenure item, uh, the savings would have been um, or the, yeah, the savings to the company would have been $317,399. And uh, their net tax property tax would have been $109,869. Well, no, let me rephrase that. That is what it is with the 100%. It's 317,399. And they would be paying 109869 uh, if it were under the 10-year abatement cycle, it would be 255,630 would be the savings, and the net paid would be 171,638. So roughly a $62,000 difference. Um, a real property tax abatement on the 2.75, uh, real property that they are estimating would have had them pay a hundred or would have a savings of $187,110. So roughly three times what the difference between these two personal property requests are. And they would have paid a net property tax under that guise of $190,800 $890. So that, you know, they, I think the RDC or the EDC, when they looked at it, they looked at the prohibition uh, for granting a real property tax abatement on that. They looked at the, the savings that were estimated with that and, and, and then looked at the request and it was well within, it was based roughly a $120,000 less in savings to the company. 
Um, and the company will give a presentation tonight to kind of fill in some of the other gaps, why it's needed, um, what, what, what are the alternatives and things like that that we typically do. But given that this is just a different request than we've seen in the past, I thought I should go through that fairly thoroughly. And I hope I have. Um, so I guess before I turn it over to the to the, the company, are there any questions you have for me on any of that information? Any questions? I have a question. Um, in your experience, has the, the EDC ever forwarded um, or reviewed a request and, and not recommended? Does, yes. How often does that happen? It doesn't happen very often. Um, typically, I mean, when a, when a company comes and, and, you know, one of the reasons when, when we were talking about, I'm getting a little off topic now, so just reel me in. I'm a, I'm a little tired from last night. Um, one of the things that we, we usually let the BDC all do the initial round of conversations with company to see if it's a good fit. Um, the BDC will reach out to me and, you know, if there are issues that I know about from past conversations with county councils or things like that. I let the company know about that up front and then they can make a determination whether whether they want to go forward or not. I mean, there's a lot of situations where they're just trying to see what what's out there and, and what our expectations are and things like that. So I, I think there's a filtering process before it ever gets to a formal um, request. Um, but there have been formal requests that have been told no at the uh, no re they were negative recommendations from the EDC at that level there's also been requests that have been no recommendations from the EDC they don't it doesn't happen very often I'm not going to tell you it happens one out of two times right it, it happens fairly infrequently um, but I think there is a process there where where we try to do I think with the BDC being the initial step and I think they do a fairly good job of weeding out a lot of the things that just aren't going to be suitable and then the EDC will look at it as well. And, and on occasion, you know, and, and I can tell you each time it was warranted, um, have recommended either with no recommendation or recommended it absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Mr. Cockrell, I think it would be helpful to see a slide that showed uh, the numbers that you read off in comparison, so we could just look at it uh, and easily uh, be able to refer to those numbers. So when you come back, would you do that, please? Yes. Thank you. I think it helped the public as well. We will make sure it's part of the packet. Thanks. Great. Questions, <clears throat> comments? Jeff, hi. Oh, actually, I, I was really just going to say sort of the same thing that Mr. Cockrell just said. I remember actually sitting in on one EDC meeting a few years ago where the recommendation was against and also due, just due to the, uh, the questions that were asked that petitioner, you know, decided never to move, not, not to move forward. So uh, and Jeff's right that the, the council, basically the EDC doesn't even see the really bad ones. And we don't see the ones that, that they that, that then might get weeded out just even due to questions uh, raised at the at the EDC meeting. Yeah, good. Thank you for that. All right. Mm -hmm. I think we're ready for a presentation, maybe. Were we able to get okay? And then do you want I guess uh, Mr. Black and Mr. Walters, you want us to go ahead and put up the, the PowerPoint and go through it that way? Or do you have a, what I let people see your faces and, and give a little bit of discussion before that happens? Uh, just let us know when you want that PowerPoint. Up. I'll, I'll spare you from having to look at my face for very long, but I'll give you a brief introduction and then perhaps it would be helpful to turn up the PowerPoint. Hello. My name is Jay Walters. I work with a site selection and advisory firm called Sickich. Uh, headquartered in Chicago, but I'm based out of Indianapolis. We represent firms that are looking to expand sites all over the United States. Here tonight, representing Oliver Winery. Uh, as you may know, Oliver Winery last year was acquired by an investment firm called Next Phase Capital. 
is good news for Oliver Winery, which means it's been an injection of capital and they're planning to uh, accelerate their growth plans. Uh, we're here tonight to talk about some options for that. Uh, they're looking at doing an expansion either there in Monroe County or doing some contract production manufacturing uh, of wine in either New York State or Washington State. Um, but it's an exciting project. Uh, John Black, CFO with Oliver, is here tonight. I'm going to turn it over to him uh, and let him go through a little bit of the background of Oliver, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but as well as some of the new developments uh, with the company. Uh, so, John, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, we can advance the slide. Uh, so, first, uh, you know, thank you to the committee for inviting us in. Um, uh, to speak tonight. Uh, we you know, appreciate having the opportunity. Um, so I'll, I'll be brief. Um, if we can move to ahead another slide. You know, the uh, winery just so celebrated our 50th, 50th anniversary. Uh, so I'm sure anyone in Bloomington knows uh, at least the name, uh, if not have visited us uh, somewhere along the way. Uh, so, you know, proud of celebrating 50 years. Uh, we were uh, acquired by a private equity firm and uh, March of 2001, uh, next phase capital, but um, they are you know, very interested in investing in our growth uh, and very supportive of our business. Uh, we are now the 28th largest uh, winery by Wine Business Monthly uh, in the United States. Uh, so uh, you, know, you can expect most of the winery production is on the West Coast. Uh, so being number 28 here in the middle of the country, you know, it's quite an accomplishment. Um, uh, let's go to the next slide. As I mentioned, you know, Next Phase Capital, um, they provide, you know, some guidance and uh, experience uh, in growing uh, businesses. Uh, so we you know, have their full support of, you know, continuing to expand and grow. Uh, we've, you know, come to a point where uh, even though we're the 20th largest winery and have you know, quite a bit of capacity for production here, and you know, today we're distributing to 41 states, you know, but still have more opportunity for growth. Uh, we have decisions along the way in terms of capacity and uh, winemaking is a very capital intensive business. And so the, the driver behind our request is to help support the decision to continue to invest for our production capacity here. Uh, the, you know, the decision is basically, as we run into bottlenecks, as we continue to expand, are we um, utilizing contract manufacturers, which again are you know, outside of the Midwest, you know, generally West Coast, and there's a few in the East Coast, um, or do we you know, buy the equipment and continue to invest here? You know, I believe the management team here, we wanna to continue to invest here and believe the best outcome is to continue to, continue to invest, uh, which is the driver for, some support for our incremental growth uh, to you know buy equipment and expand. Um, it's not a overly labor intensive uh, you know product, but you know with growth comes more uh, job openings and opportunities at the winery. Uh, we can probably step through the next slides pretty quickly if we advance. Uh, just you know example of the where money gets spent. You know tanks, large metal equipment, uh, machinery. Uh, let's go ahead and advance. Uh, so this is um, this is our primary production facility uh, uh, that we are investing in, and uh, this is where the difference came down in terms of the real property, personal property. Um, you know, we had you know, an example of a bottleneck uh, was our warehouse, and we need to expand it quickly. That was the real property request, uh, which you know, due to the laws, we shelved the request for abatement there. Uh, but we still have, you know, even though we are going to do that here and expand, further growth requires more equipment. And that's what the personal property decision is and that, you know, continuing to buy equipment and expand um, on our campus here for additional production capacity. Uh, I think we can probably step through the next slides. Next. So that's just uh, the site. Uh, workforce and training again, you know, not a lot of winemaking experience in the Midwest. So everybody we hire, we have to train. So we make a significant investment uh, in personnel. Next slide. 
Uh, we are you know, making efforts to become uh, more sustainable in our uh, practices uh, in terms of energy consumption and utilization of resources. Again, that requires uh, investment uh, in equipment. Next slide. Uh, and you know, just kind of end with, you know, we are supportive of the community and we also appreciate uh, your support. So, you know, thanks for giving us the opportunity to speak tonight and uh, tell, tell you a little bit about the winery. Just a couple of closing notes, just uh, some awards we've won. 2021 blue chip brand. Uh, next slide. Um, we are, um, uh, oh, go ahead and go one more. Uh, this just outlines some of the schedule details, but I think your request from Jeff Price is a little bit more detailed than this. And I think that may be the end. So happy to field any questions if we can. Thank you. Um, would would you mind going back to the previous slide uh, with the numbers? Perfect. Thanks so much. Um, I'm just going to leave that up there so I can absorb it a little bit more. But are there questions um, from council? No questions. Okay, we'll start with yeah. we'll, we'll start with you. Thank you. I, thanks for your presentation. I had a question. I should know this by heart. I'm ashamed I don't. How many do you currently employ? And does this, your proposal, you're saying you're adding 21 positions and over how long? Uh, so we currently employ around 70 full-time equivalents. Uh, um, we have the actual count of actual employed personnel is around 100 because we have a lot of part-time staff in the tasting room, but 70 on a full-time equivalent basis. Uh, the 21 ads is over a five-year time horizon. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Iverson. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you uh, for being here tonight. I, you know, uh, let's see, as I'm looking at the numbers you have up, I just wanted to reiterate a little bit here uh, that uh, with 100% at seven years, the first year would be about a $48,000, estimated tax abatement savings. Year two would be 68, year three would be 51, uh, and then it would be around 39 to 36 for the remainder of that seven year term. That's based on the sheet in the packet from Hoosier Energy Economic Development. Um, I, I think, you know, a, a lot of um, my, my questions tonight um, have to do with, uh, as we're considering uh, this tax payment to help you all expand, uh, we are also at the same time uh, under a pretty uh, intense uh, economic pressures here on the county council. I don't know if you're aware, but we also, you know, we, we passed a, a budget recently that um, was uh, tricky to pass uh, due to some some issues there. And, and I just, you know, I, I, I really appreciate your PowerPoint and, um, I just wanted to take this time to kind of express some of those those thoughts that are in my head. I don't have them formulated into any specific question at this point, but I I wanted to be able to at least express some of the thoughts that are, that were percolating in my head as I'm I'm considering uh, this. So I think I think I'm going to stop talking now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Councilor McKen. Yes, actually, uh, when uh, when do you plan to actually make the decision about whether to make this investment? Yeah, since this is focused on the personal property, these are actually yeah, staged investments over the next five years. So it's just as we hit you know bottlenecks, you know certain equipment we need to order you know in advance and laid out. So it's really over five year, which probably the uh, you know, there's you know certainly a, a substantial amount in the next in the near three years, you know, just to you know build out the production capacity. But it, it's over a five year period. Okay, thanks. I'm I'm uh, you know I'm I'm very enthusiastic about this project. I think this is you know Oliver Winery is an iconic Monroe County brands, and it's 
enjoyed throughout the country. And uh, I certainly uh, really want to do anything we can to make sure that it, it uh, its production stays here and that it stays a, an iconic Monroe County brand. Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify what I understood our purpose tonight is. We are voting, but we're voting to preliminarily approve, which then keeps the process going and we'll have a final approval, presumably in uh, December. Yeah, absolutely. We would notice a public hearing for your next meeting and then the, the, we would have that public hearing mm -hmm. and then that would be a time you we would make a final determination. Got it. Okay. Just wanted to make sure I understood yes. that. Um, other questions? Yes. Awesome. Yes, with... Uh, 21 uh, additional FTEs expected. Uh, can you tell us about uh, the average uh, salaries for these, these new personnel? I think we have listed on the application an average wage of $21.63 plus benefits. Thank and you. those those benefits bring that up to just shy of thirty thirty dollars an hour if you include the cost of the benefits. I, I'd also like to kind of give a little bit more uh, background of what the EDC because the EDC when when we had the the discussion really honed in on the, where else would you go um, and so. You know, when they talked, they, and they they went through it fairly quickly. But when the EDC really questioned them on them, they 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 rattle off three or four different facilities that are currently in existence that that would be capable of taking over some of this load. And so, it, you know, I think that carried a lot of weight with the EDC in the fact that there was true decision making and that this was truly something that was bringing something in. I think that was a, an important factor in the recommendation for this different schedule than we're used to. Thank you. Other questions or comments from council? Okay, is there um, any public comment on this item? Mr. Greiner. Well, good evening, Council. My name is Clark Greiner. I'm the Economic Development Director for the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. And uh, I'm here to, uh, on behalf of the BEDC, to uh, uh, express support for Oliver Winery and what they are doing. Um, with the abatement uh, requests that they've made, when you look at adding 21 new jobs over that period of time, um, Obviously, we all know that we're, we're preparing to face some headwinds economically, both for the county, but also for the company and for people. So if we can add additional payroll uh, within our community over the next few years, I think that would be a fantastic thing. The other side of this is that if you look at their average wage, it's well above uh, at, at almost $30 an hour. That's a great number uh, for hourly wages. So... Um, I think those are all positive things. So if there's any, um, and I would be happy um, uh, to talk with you later about some of the uh, figures to help get that a little more uh, clear uh, within your uh, minds to be able to help understand the details of that and why those decisions were made. And just to reiterate what uh, um, Mr. Cockrell said is that there are choices that they have. We're, we really want to keep that investment of personal property uh, that a significant amount of personal property here. They do have choices to have manufacturing done in the Washington state. Uh, New York is another place where they have that done. And so the investment allowing them to help um, take a, give them a, a little relief on some of the taxes would be very supportive of what they're trying to do with regards to keeping that investment here. Um, and then the other thing is the company recently was is, uh, named as one of the top places to work. Uh, in Monroe County and certainly the state of Indiana. So I think that's something that the company has been around for a significant amount of time and uh, uh, your show of support would be most appreciated. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I just noticed that Councillor Hawk has her hand up and um, if you would go ahead and unmute, that would be fine.
Councillor Hawk. Yes. Ah. Yes. I'm sorry, I stepped out of the room for just a minute, so I I saw the presentation and I heard the response from uh, Mr. Greiner. Now, is this, so now are we getting ready to vote on preliminary because I'm not allowed to vote? Oh, I know, I had my hand up, uh, but that was quite a while yes. ago. Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, well, I was, what I wanted to make the point is that when you offer an abatement, it never means you're going to be getting less than what we're receiving now. It means that the growth of the uh, new taxes coming in uh, will be less, uh, but it will continue to grow and grow until it hits the full amount. Is, the, is there any difference in this because you're talking about it's with personal property? And that is a question of our attorney. Is Mr. Cockrell there? He is. Give him just a second. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm such a wimp tonight. I'm just. <laughs> I, I'm not. I don't know if I understood the question. Okay. The in always with abatement, we have to recognize that. It isn't that we're seeing a reduction in taxes that we're receiving now. It is a reduction in the growth of the taxes, but it will always be more. Uh, but now this is asking for 100%. It, it still doesn't mean less than what we're receiving right now. Is that correct? Uh, that, that is correct. Okay, that's that was the point that I wanted to make. Thank you. Right, thank you. It's a good thing to make sure everyone knows. Um, any, so we were at public comment. Are there any other members of the public who would like to make comment? Uh, Jim Shelton has his hand raised. Good evening, Jim Shelton with the chamber. I just want to speak on behalf of the chamber in support of this. Uh, I couldn't agree with Mr. McKim Moore. They are an iconic employer here. They are a great employer and they are a great corporate citizen. Uh, they support all manner of, of social entities here. And uh, I think anything we can do to help them and help them grow and help them grow here, we ought to do. So I encourage you to approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. Um, then we will go ahead and ask for a roll call vote. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor McKim? Yes. Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Okay, thank you. Oh, we get to see you, Mr. Cockrell. <clears throat> Council, I move to approve Ordinance 2022-47, amend terms and conditions for the purchase of land. And let me read that resolution. Pardon me while I get to it. Okay. Ordinance 2022-47, an ordinance to amend the approved and fixed terms and conditions for the purchase of land, whereas pursuant to the authority granted to the Monroe County Council by the General Assembly of the State of Indiana under IC 36-2-2-20, the council, a conveyance or purchase by a county of land having a value of $1,000 or more must be authorized by an ordinance of the county fiscal body. Pardon me, I lost my place there fixing the terms and conditions of the transaction and whereas the Monroe County Board of Commissioners intend to purchase land from the Bill C. Brown Revocable Trust seller under certain terms, which are described in the attached and incorporated contract for purchase of real estate marked as exhibit one and whereas the original exhibit one indicates a purchase price of $10,020,000. However, the average of two appraisals was $10,000 less and whereas 
the seller and commissioners have agreed to amend the purchase agreement to reflect the average of two appraisals shown in exhibit two. The amendment requires council approve it, approval pursuant to IC 36-1-10.5-5 and IC 36-2-2-20. Now therefore be it ordained and established by the Monroe County Council as follows. Section one, the Monroe County Council has been provided an appraisal for the property owned by the Bill C. Brown Revocable Trust and described as Exhibit 1. Section 2, <clears throat> the council wishes for Monroe County to acquire the property owned by seller and described in Exhibit 1 and is amended in Exhibit 2. As the fiscal body for Monroe County, this ordinance serves as the expression of the council's interest in purchasing the land as required by IC 36-1-10.5-5. Section 3, per IC 36-2-2-20, the council approves of all the terms and conditions described in the contract for purchase of real estate, which is attached here to as Exhibit 1 and Exhibit 2. Section 4, to the extent council approval is required, the council approves the execution and deliverance of any and all documents necessary to approve the contract for purchase of real estate and authorizes officers of the county to take any and all action necessary to ratify, approve, or finalize the transaction. Ordinance 2022-47 is hereby presented to the Monroe County Council of Indiana, read in full, and adopted this 15th day of November 2022. Second. Thank you. Um, Mr. Cockrell. Uh, yes, I would just say, as with all ordinances, this requires a either a unanimous vote at the introduction tonight, or it would just go to the next uh, to the next meeting for a, a second reading and a second uh, for a second introduction. Um, essentially, the change from the previously uh, approved one is that it reduces the purchase price by $10,000 to reflect what the average of two appraisals is. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions from council? Yes, go ahead. Um, Mr. Cockrell, given the uh, uh, report last night at the uh, city uh, plan commission, I looked through here to see if there was a condition in this uh, approval that would keep us from moving forward if there was not approval for rezone of the land. The, 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 this, con this, this purchase agreement is contingent upon rezoning the land to a zoning that would allow for j the jail as a conditional use. Okay, I just, I was trying to read, read through this and I just didn't see that specific wording. But it's, you assure me that it's there? Yes. Thank you. Any other questions from council? Okay. Uh, any public comment on this item? Then let's have a roll call vote. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor McCam? I believe he's stepped away. Councilor yeah. Wiltz? Yes. Motion passed five to zero. Great, thank you. And now we're at number 10 on our agenda, which is the highway department. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for a fund to fund cash transfer of $2,800,000 from fund 49200000 Westside Economic Development, Richland Township, TIF, to fund 81650000 Vernal Pike, and simultaneously approve an additional appropriation in fund 8165. 0000 Vernal Pike in the amount of $2,800,000 in the services category. Second. Welcome, Ms. Ridge. Good evening. Um, this is just actually to keep our project going for the Vernal Pike connector road. Um, the appraisal came in a little higher than what we anticipated. 
we'll be ironing out those details, but to be able to go ahead and acquire the, pro um, the property, uh, we have to deposit the funds in the courts um, so we can get access to the property. Um, NDOT has stepped up to, uh, do, they awarded the project in 2017 of a little over $7 million for this project uh, due to the cost and it's 2022 now. Um, they're gonna go ahead and bring it up to an 80-20 and put another 3 million to the project, bringing it a little bit over 10 million. So this shows that we're committed to keep the project going and, and moving forward. Yeah. Great, are there questions from council? Well, let me be able to say publicly, congratulations. That's great news. Uh, it's always great when you come before us and it seems like you're always coming in with more, more funds. So I'm very happy to support this. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? No, okay. Uh, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote please? Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Munson? Councilor Munson stepped away. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Motion passed 4 0. And then we have We're our item. Council, I move to approve the Highway Department's request for a fund to fund cash transfer of $150,000 from Fund 4920. 000 West Side Economic Development, Richland Township, TIF, to fund 8164-0000, Curry, Woodyard, Smith, and so simultaneously approve an additional appropriation and fund 8164-0000, Curry, Woodyard, Smith, in the amount of $150,000 in the services category. And this one? Oh. Second. This one. Um, this is actually for our Curry Pike, Smith Pike, uh, Woodyard Road intersection project. Um, it has been completed. So we'll do, uh, be going through the steps to close out this project. We have to come to a zero balance in these accounts when it's a grant reimbursable fund. So we're transferring out of the West Side TIF into this grant fund to help bring it back to a zero balance. Are there any questions or comments from council on this item? It's busy over there. Every time I go over there, people are just zipping through those roundabouts. It's cool. It seems to be working. Yeah, it sure does. That's a good school project. Um, other comments or questions? Any public comment? <clears throat> Could we have a roll call vote, please? Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Munson? Abstain. Motion passed. Four, zero, one abstain. And now we move to item C. Yes. Council, I move to approve the highway department's request for an additional appropriation in fund 1197-0000 stormwater management of $20,000 in the supplies category. Second. Um, what, what do you have for us on this? Uh, we want to put some new tires on a tandem truck and a pickup <laughs> truck. Um, so we want to go ahead and get that additional and get that uh, before the winter. So. All right. Questions, comments from council? No. Any public comment? We need some tires. Let's do it. Um, may I have a roll call vote? Councillor Munson? Yes. Councillor Iverson? Yes. Councillor Crossley? Yes. Councillor Deckard? Yes. Councillor Wiltz? Yes. Motion passed 5 0. Great. Item D. Council, I move to approve the Highway Department's request and a new, for a new account line 23400 by two minutes in fund 11860000 rainy day fund and simultaneously approve an additional appropriation of $1,001 $1, $1 million in the supplies category. 
be a problem, wouldn't it? <laughs> I need a second. Second. Um, can you remind me about this item? Pardon me? Could you remind me about this item? I can. I vaguely remember it. Um, so we actually had put it into the 2023 budget. We had, have had many discussions on assistance for the paving program for the county. Um, we're waiting for word on this last July submittal for community crossings, which we've submitted to since 2016. Um, we've been awarded in those calls and it's a 50-50 match. If we're awarded, um, those will be um, announced later at um, this year. Um, our match would be $835,000 if we're awarded those four paving projects. In January, we'll turn around and we will resubmit a new list and that call for projects. Again, if we're awarded in the spring, um, we'll have to come up for that much match. Our MBH budget roughly runs around 1.2 million for paving. So um, local road and street, we've used all of our budgets, which is necessary to show that we have used all the budgets available to um, use for paving before we've reached to outside sources. So that's why we wanted to um, come to the council to ask for additional funds to improve the paving program in the county. The cost of the, the materials and such going up and labor and um, hiring outside sources, um, has caused us to come in and ask for that assistance. Okay, thank you. Are there questions or comments from council? Council Iverson. Uh, just that uh, we had discussed this numerous times and this uh, would bring our rainy day balance down to $7,622,088 by my the calculations I think we had talked about. And I think uh, this is a worthy investment. Uh, I drove on some really nice roads out at uh, Salt Creek Township and Benton Townships, and um, what makes a world of difference it makes a world of difference. So y'all doing a good job. Thank you. Other comments or questions? All right. Um, could we have oh public comment? Is there any public comment? I do not see any public comment. So roll call vote, please. <coughs> Councilor Wills? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Munson? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. And that is all of it, right? Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we have item 11, which is from our aviation department. Council, I move to approve the Aviation Department's request for an additional appropriation in Fund 4802-0000 Aviation Building Fund of $9,000 in the services category. Second. And we have um, Carlos Laverty on the screen with us. Okay, welcome. Uh, greetings, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good deal. All right. The, uh, at the last board meeting, uh, the Board of Aviation Commissioners uh, 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 agreed to approve uh, to pay Intertech uh, a $9,000 fee to install bird exclusions on hangar I. Uh, that hangar has a, kind of a little bird infestation problem. Um, and uh, we need an appropriation from our uh, our building fund into the hangar repair and maintenance line to uh, to affect that. So I, we had some pictures. I don't know if they're rolling. Um, we had some pictures of some of the uh, the bird droppings. It's our large transient hangar. It's about a twenty thousand square foot hangar. So aircraft that uh, kind of come and go and need some shelter for a few days. And there's also some long term tenants in there as well. Uh, they they leave their aircraft in there, but there's about uh, there's a small flock of starlings, maybe 20 to 30, and uh, they're really doing a lot of damage to the hangar. They're nesting inside, and the droppings are falling on people's aircraft. Uh, we've tried a number of uh, uh, deterrents, but the problem is uh, there's there's just some some cracks and crevices where the doors fold that the birds are able to get through. So Intertech will install a series of uh, very rigid 
uh, bristles that will kind of interlock and um, and kind of uh, preclude any birds from getting inside of the hangar. And then they will also go inside the hangar, uh, remove any nesting material and sanitize uh, the building as well. Sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments from council? Uh, nothing. All right. All right. Nothing. Um, I don't have a question either. Sounds like, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, I guess. Um, is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor McKim, or sorry, Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Motion passed unanimous. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, now we are at item 12. Council, I move to approve resolution 2022-29-2023 meeting schedule for County Council and Personnel, Personnel Administration Committee, PAC. Second. Um, we looked at this last meeting. Um, it seemed lovely. And I believe the change, there was one change where PAC wanted to go ahead and schedule out their meetings for the entire year as opposed to just the first four months. Was there anything else that had changed on that? No, um, we just kind of uh, changed the way it looked a little bit. Um, so we're hoping that that'll make it easier for departments and, and those to be able to find the dates with regards to um, scheduling for additional appropriations as well as the meetings. And um, I had a, a Miss Molly here to help me <laughs> with the wording on that. So she, we redone the wording. So all the wording is at the top and then the schedules were at the bottom. So that's the only difference that you'll see. Okay. Um, looks good. Do we have any questions from council? No. Do we have any public comment on our schedule? All right, seeing none, um, we will approve this with a roll call vote. Councilor Munson? Yes. Councilor Deckard? Yes. Councilor Iverson? Yes. Councilor Crossley? Yes. Councilor Wiltz? Yes. Motion passed unanimous five zero. Great, thanks. And now we are at item 13, uh, which is a discussion regarding merit deputy and correctional center personnel and their compensation. Um, I know that Councillor Crossley and Councillor Munson in particular have worked a lot on um, kind of pulling data together and, and um, a lot of information for us to consider. Um, would either of you like to talk to us about this? Well, I think I was tapped to do this. <laughs> I was trying to make it seem impromptu. <laughs> I, I, I think you were trying to make it optional. <laughs> Jen Crossley, you wanna jump in here? I will when you go. Okay. <laughs> So <clears throat> I think it would be good this evening uh, to begin this discussion with um, reviewing some background to the, to the issues. Um, over the last several months, both the correctional officers from the jail and the merit deputies from the sheriff's office uh, have representatives who have come to the council to ask our help in dealing with declining staff numbers uh, declining morale in some cases, and also decreasing uh, numbers of applications or quality of applications. 
to fill vacant positions. Uh, they recommended increased compensation and bonuses to help deal with these issues. Uh, Jennifer Crossley and I as co-liaisons for the jail and Jen Crossley and Trent Deckard as co-liaisons for the sheriff's office have discussed various options to help with retention. Um, beyond the countywide retention bonus that the council approved uh, last month. And this, the, the countywide bonus is for all employees and is considered a retention bonus because there are issues in many departments. <clears throat> the jail staffing issue in particular has been described as dire and we are legitimately as the fiscal body of this county government uh, concerned about low staffing effects on our public safety and also on our employees. So we looked at information. We received information from the correctional officers, from the jail commander, from the deputies, and in particular from our staff. Um, uh, Mr. Jeff Cockrell, who saw speaking earlier tonight, and Ms. Molly Turner King, who is the uh, attorney for the county council. Mr. Cockrell has worked with uh, both the uh, correctional officers and the merit deputies on their contract, so you know him well. And they looked, uh, all of them have looked at compensation that is uh, provided by other counties. And this is important for us to consider. Uh, we, we also look- Can you pull your mic around? Am I not speaking close enough? Let me move it closer. Does that help? Yes. Sorry. I hope you heard what I just said because uh, the background information is important uh, to what uh, we're going to talk about in just a minute. <clears throat> So considering all this, we want to be able to help with the situation and also attend to our uh, fiscal responsibilities. And that means we need to know the, the fiscal impact of any proposal. With the help of Kim Shell in our council office, we put together a uh, proposals uh, listing the fiscal impact. And council members have seen some of this that has gone out in their packets and emails. And <clears throat> I think this would be the right time, Michelle, if you would put that on the screen. I need to share my screen, please. So before, wow, that's tiny. <laughs> yep. Would you, would you do what you can to make it larger? Well, which section do you let's, want? Let's, okay. Let me say that we came up with uh, two proposals labeled A and B, and I'll talk about them separately. So let's focus on A here first. <clears throat> I, um, I want to advise that we are, having a discussion tonight among council members. And we are going to present options, but these will not be the only options you may wish to consider. We're gonna give you fiscal impact information for specific options, but there's enough information just on the spreadsheet alone that if you want to increase or decrease uh, any of the options, you can easily calculate what the fiscal impact would be. So let's start with proposal A. <clears throat> and as we discussed this, Ms. Crossley and I uh, talked about this being funded by the ARPA program. Uh, and ARPA funding does allow for retention. Proposal A is a bonus and that has uh, specific fiscal impacts um, FICA is paid on bonuses, but not retirement. 
so so the we are going to consider the the seven point six five percent FICA rate uh, as part of the fiscal impact. There are in total uh, sixty seven um, members of the jail staff and of the merit deputies. Uh, there are forty four, and they are paid from two funds. One from most from the general fund. Uh, and some of them from the public safety fund. So we have to we have to look at both funds. It's important for us to look at <clears throat> the um, the fund balance uh, for the jail in particular, and the current balance in the the general fund um, has unexpended monies uh, of. Seven million seven hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, under public safety, there is a smaller amount, six hundred thirty-seven thousand uh, dollars, in the public safety fund. You can see for the jail that there is uh, a proposal of a one thousand dollar bonus to be paid uh, in late December. Um, I believe Michelle said uh, the, the, the next to last pay period of the year would be the time when it could be paid, uh, taking into account the requirements for advertising, uh, the approval, I mean, the approval of the council, the uh, necessary advertisements, et cetera. So a thousand, oops, a thousand dollar bonus would be $62,000 for the jail from the, the general fund and from the public safety lip fund, uh, $5,000. Michelle, would you like to comment about the balances? About the, excuse me, the what? About the balances. Um, uh, as you know, the general fund has a lot of departments in it. So that's why the amount uh, unexpended is 7 million. So that takes into account every department that has a general fund. So that, that explains the unexpended unexpen balance. And so that amount will come out of your uh, current balance. So that's part of, so that 7 million comes kind of out of that. Okay. That's my understanding. Is that right? Marie? Is that how that works? Yes. Okay. So the. <clears throat> and I would also note for council, I think the proposal anticipates payment of this bonus at, using ARPA funds, which yes. would warrant a conversation with the commissioners. And as a reminder, right. the commissioners will be present at the council meeting right. on November 22nd. Yeah. So if, if the council wishes to move forward <clears throat> with this proposal and to also pay it out of ARPA, we will necessarily be discussing this at our next meeting with the commissioners because we need both the council and the commissioners working together on this. I also want to let you know that um, with the, regards to the additional appropriation needed, um, I have advertised based on a recommendation from uh, the commissioners with regards to the ARPA. So um, I have got that on there for the December 6th. And so in anticipation of not knowing how or what fund you guys wanted to do, um, I also did an additional appropriation in general fund, uh, PS lit, as well as rainy day. And I took um, like a very max of what it would cost. Um, and uh, so I've advertised way more than enough in all, all of these just depending on what you guys, what I wasn't sure how you wanted to do it, but I wanted to make sure I covered all of our bases with regards to advertising. So, so, so that's very important for all of us to know. And Michelle has uh, paved the way for us to be flexible. <clears throat> so you can see um, for, uh, for the jail, it would cost $62,000 plus in the general fund, plus $5 in the public safety 
fund or a total of $67,000 uh, to provide a $1,000 bonus. Uh, if you wanted to cut it to 500, you could just divide that by two. Very simple. Uh, for the sh sheriff's deputies, uh, the, the total amount would be $44,000. And uh, on top of that, uh, you can look at uh, adding on FICA, considering both the jail and jail staff and the deputies um, and FICA, we have a total here of $119,000. So that is basically proposal A. And I'd like to uh, ask you all if you have questions or want to discuss this before we would talk about proposal B. Oh, I should tell you what proposal B is. <laughs> so, you know, proposal B is, is a base increase in salary. So this is, which is separate from a bonus. A bonus is a one-time payment, whereas a base increase is a payment uh, that would change with the, the start of the pay period. And it would be in our salary deliberations going forward year after year after year. Okay, so now for, for the bonus, proposal A, do you have any questions or comments? No. I just had a really <clears throat> quick clarification. Proposal A and proposal P, B are not mutually exclusive for council, right? They That's, are absolutely not. It's, it's, combination. it's not an alternate. Yes, yeah. yes. Thank you very much. Thank you for asking that, uh, clarifying it. Yes. Uh, my question is for staff. Um, should we uh, go or should we go with proposal A? Uh, does this meet the allowable expenditures and usages laid out by Treasury for using American recovery plan funds? Mm -hmm. I presume it does, but I, I thought I'd ask the question anyway. So. Uh, uh, proposal A, which is using ARPA funding to provide a bonus, does that that means Treasury guidance for use for ARPA funds? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make yeah. that clarification. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and I was going to say um, just to also make a comment. Um, it's also been very helpful to work with Council on Munson on this um as well and then i see out in the audience we have uh, a collective bargaining unit uh, from our jail that is here and i know that council munson and i have been in in communication with sergeant wilson um and we you know also said this in our email too but we also want to make sure that what is said you know in our email is also you know public to you as well and so you know we understand that this is very frustrating and we, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> we're sorry that it is, you know, taking this long. And we understand the severity of all of the things that are going on, whether it's morale, whether it is health. Um, I'm looking at the team now and I see there's different faces from what I saw yes. back in April. I see two people, with you included, um, that I recognize and I realize in trying to reach out that some of the correctional officers have since moved on, hence the problem that we're in. Um, so I don't want you all to feel, um, and Mayor Deputy Sue, I'm talking to you as well, but it, mainly in particular with the correctional um, staff because they were the ones that came to us first, um, but we don't want you all to feel that conversations have been falling on deaf ears, so to speak. And in conversations today, when we talk about um, you know, for example, the tax abatement and things like that. It's really difficult to sit in this seat and listen to those types of things. And knowing that, you know, we keep talking about, you know, putting investments and those particular things, which I agree. I think we should be doing those things. But I also want to make sure that I say this publicly as well. We need to make sure that we are putting investments in our correctional officers, as well as our mayor deputies um, as well, because without them right now, we do have a public safety issue. Um, we understand with holidays, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, it's nine days away. We understand that with that being said, 
There are lots of things that could also, this is a time for family and jovial times. Um, and we're sitting here having to talk to you about issues that are, you're, you're having. So I, I say all that to say that, you know, this has been, I understand that this has been an extremely difficult and frustrating process um, as for some of us as well. And we are trying to do right. It might not seem like in the past that, you know, there are things that we're trying to do, um, but we, we're, we're trying. I know, and I just want you to know that from the bottom of my heart, um, as well as Council Munson, as well as I also think the rest of um, our county council as well. So I just wanted to say that. Uh, but I also wanted to say in terms of the ARPA funding, we, are, we know that ARPA funding is something that it, it's a one-time thing. And we understand that, you know, this is to help to stop the, the trauma um, and, and, and try to help whatever we can with the morale of our, our current situation that we currently have. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Councilor Munson, but I know we had talked about with the ARPA funding because if obviously we have to go through the commissioners as well and we have a next meeting that comes up and we work with them, but the goal was to have the bonuses in the hands of folks um, before, the, um, before Christmas. Um, paycheck. So just trying to, just so that we're all aware um, that this bonus that we're talking about is something that we would try to get out soon as we are working with the commissioners, as the commissioners would be okay with our proposal, which I would really hope that they would be. Um, but I just wanted to just say things because again, I know sometimes people say things in, in private, but I also wanna make sure that it is publicly acknowledged in our meeting that we are really, really, really trying um, to do what we can. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Crossley, that for adding that, <clears throat> adding that information. I think that really helps clarify it. <clears throat> well, let's, let's tackle proposal B that this is the base increase in salary. <clears throat> and I want to get that up on the screen. And yeah. okay, <clears throat> the four labeled columns to your left. Um, I want to refer to these. Uh, the column uh, headed percentage increase reference. That is the 2022 current uh, salary with FICA and PERF added in. And then uh, the second uh, dark green column that says fiscal impact reference, that is the 2023 uh, salary with the 5% cost of living that the council previously approved and the fact and perp added it. Is that all okay with you, counselors? Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is this will help you understand where the numbers come from. TS TS. The shared screen. Shared screen on the side. For the side bills. To do the what? Oh, thank you. Thank you for doing that, Ms. Turner King. Do they, do they have enough? We're getting there. They get, I have an extra one. If you yeah. want to pay. It's on the screen now. It may or may not be helpful, but. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Are there enough paper copies for you all to read? Good. Yeah, all right. Thanks. Okay, good. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, and can we move it up just a little bit? Yeah, more? that's what I'm. There we go. Okay. Oops. Okay. Thank you. Navigating this. So, <clears throat> so discussing what might be possible for us, we wanted to uh, have you all understand that <clears throat> the proposals that we're considering um, are based on different grids for the sheriff's deputies and for the jail staff. They just 
simply have different grids and they're handled differently. Their longevity is calculated differently. So we had to sort of play around with this. <clears throat> and another factor is that the jail staff has a grid that is tied to the Wagner Irwin Shealy system that we use for all employee, for almost all employee uh, uh, compensation references. And <clears throat> this is something that we've been moving to gradually. We've worked very hard uh, with our council staff to achieve this. Our personal action committee uh, <clears throat> works with this all the time. And <clears throat> there are advantages to staying, on, staying within a grid because you um, do know what is predictable and uh, everybody can communicate with that, that one grid. Okay, uh, we looked at um, a 9% increase for the jail base that, and I wanna tell you that includes that 5% COLA that the council already voted on for 2023. So that's an additional amount and we calculated what it would cost in the general fund and in the public safety fund for uh, jail staff. We moved outside the grid uh, and calculated what a 10% would be. And 10% is just a, a nice round number. It makes a lot of sense. Why do we even look at the 9%? The 9% is based simply on how the uh, different uh, salary ranges are in the Wagner Irwin Shealy system for, uh, for the grid. Is that correct, Michelle? Okay. I'd like to just make a statement that the 9% is based from the 2022 amount. Yes. So, you know, that's it's a which would then give a, a total, a grand total of 9%. Inclusive of, Inclusive Inclusive of, of that five. Right. 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 Yeah, so I just wanted to make that so clear. It's really a 4% over what? 4% over, the, of over the 23. Right. 4% of, but it's really not 4% over 23 because that would be different numbers. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy, it is crazy when you, when you if you look at it right. percentages. So, so, so that's yeah. why that's why I label those columns uh, percentage increase reference. Okay, and the fiscal impact reference. And since we already passed the, the 2023 budget, I'm talking about the fiscal impact over 2023. What we've already approved. <clears throat> okay, so we can we can. Uh, change the, we could do a 10% increase for the jail staff and take them out of their grid, but that's less advisable for staff and, and for payroll. That's, that's all I can say. Um, the 14% and the 15% are bumping things up 5% in each category. So that is, uh, that's just another option. And obviously it's, it has a bigger fiscal impact. Uh, talking about the uh, merit deputies, the, we did something comparable for them. And uh, the merit deputies uh, have a different grid. Uh, is theirs with WIS? Yes, theirs is based on a WIS recommendation. So they have their own grid for the merit deputies. Right. <clears throat> and we can uh, make, uh, we can do nine or 10%, 14 or 15%, and it will not affect their grid. Is that correct, Michelle? That is correct. I, I, the only thing I would have to do is whatever you choose, I can easily manipulate that. Okay. Um, I would like to clarify with regards to the jail. Okay. Um, the jail staff, um, per their agreement, um, and with the uh, help of WIS, their classifications um, 
their job descriptions have uh, classifications. And so when we moved to accepting the WIS information, we, um, it, was a re it was recommended by WIS that they would use the base amount for their starting salary. So what I'm saying here is so that just to make it clear for those that are listening is instead of using the base minimum, you could use the one year as their base, or you could use the three year as their base. Mm -hmm. um, when you get, and that still keeps them on the grids with our, the rest of our mm -hmm. um, employees. Um, if you use anything, if you use 10, 15, whatever, I would have to go in and create a grid for them with regards to those numbers because it's going to affect um, the overall rate range, I, I want to say. Okay. I would have to create a new range for them. And the reason that it does not, that's not the case with the um, merit deputies is because of the longevity calculation. Right. Yeah. The so, jail okay. has the jail has a base, mm -hmm. and then for every year of their longevity, it's added to their base rate. Right. So they're just a totally different animal. It's harder <laughs> to to calculate and mm -hmm. keep it to a workable kind mm -hmm. of plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. In addition, we have. Um, <clears throat> We have corporals, which also have a particular kind of calculation. Would you explain that? Right. Uh, the corporals uh, within the jail, uh, they get the base rate, plus they also get 70 cents on that base rate as well. So then, so they, so that bumps them up, that bumps up their base. And then on top of that, they get their longevity amounts. So that's another factor I've got to work in when working with creating mm -hmm. a grid mm -hmm. for jail. This mm -hmm. way, if we stay within these parameters, mm -hmm. um, I don't have to, you know, it stays within our grids and it's easier to follow mm -hmm. and to understand. But, but if you choose to, it just takes me a, a little bit to, to work something out. I do think there's something to be said for the attempt to stay with the grid that were created and put in place to guide us more than just a year. <laughs> yes, more than a year. Now that we're a year in, let's, I, I would strongly recommend that we keep with <clears throat> that system, whatever mm -hmm. we're, we're doing. So I would add to, add to that by saying, we have invested in the Wagner Irwin Shelley yes. system. Yeah. I mean, we have, <clears throat> we have bought the system. So, uh, Mm -hmm. It's important that we use it properly. So I think we should have any discussion that people would like to have. I think that Councillor Iverson might have something he'd like to say. I, I wanted to follow up on the, the WIS line of questions because we do have a maintenance plan. And I was reviewing that in the context of these two proposals. And I didn't see anything in that maintenance plan that this, these, either one of these proposals violates. I, th I think we're well within the bounds of that maintenance plan mm -hmm. to do this. I do share uh, sentiments though, that I, I, I would be really hesitant to create those new ranges. Well, and, and I, I do too, because uh, before we went into 2022, I went back and looked and I had at least 18 to 19 different grids. Yep. And it was a pain to keep track of every single one yep. because some of them were just for one person. Yeah. Um, yes, this is a group, but like I said, it's your decision on how you want to move forward and I will work with whatever you choose to decide. So continuing that line of thought, we want to stay with the grids. Um, and I feel like we should consider a priority on equity between the two groups. So doing the same thing for the jail employees and the 
the deputies, um, which it sounds like we can do if we do 9% or 14% or some percent that lands mm -hmm. you at one of those year steps. Right. So the jail is kind of setting the, the, the floor. The floor, yes, thank you. Um, just makes the numbers weird, but um, makes the grids work. <clears throat> right, and then, and just as a reminder, whatever you choose with regards to a percentage increase, this is going to affect their base moving forward right. for right. years to come. So, Which yeah. brings us to the next point to consider, which is that fiscal impact of, um, which you've laid out here really nicely. Um, and then I look back up at the, the top um, of this whole page that has the current balance and unexpended balance. You want to see that? Um, I would. Thank you. So that. Um, but this is for 2022. Yes, that's a 2022. Right. <clears throat> so I guess my questions then kind of turn toward anticipated, like, is this typical? Is this, I mean, what's the anticipated? Um, capacity in PSLET to handle this. I know that I'm asking for numbers that don't exist. I do get you that. Are. I know, I know. <laughs> I think, but I'm just obviously so. to the extent that we can think about this, <clears throat> I guess I'm just wondering what people are thinking with respect to how this could be sustainable. Yeah. Okay. So I certainly think about sustainable too. And I will remind us that we have a deficit budget for 2023 and we all know that. Uh, we, I don't think we can expect any additional funds coming in from um, <clears throat> for public safety lit. And um, I can't, can't project what the what the uh, growth quotient might be for for next year, the allowable growth quotient. Um, I, I'm going to be a fiscal conservative and say, I want to increase the base rate, but I want, I, <clears throat> I urge the lower amount because, uh, because I know where we are fiscally for the county. And I don't feel comfortable uh, having a higher amount. And I do want to remind uh, the deputies and, and the jail staff that there is, that you will be getting that $2,000 retention bonus for 2023. That's, that's a one-time payment, but, and we wanted to do this for you. <clears throat> but I lean towards uh, the 9% increase. Um, <clears throat> others of you may have, have better, better arguments. Well, I certainly appreciate that balance, trying to, you know, trying mm -hmm. to strike that balance. But I, I also am hesitant if I don't know What information could I lean on to um, feel confident that we can afford the 9%, I guess? Um, Ms. Gregory prepared a revenue yes, kind of thing did. for, I think it was for PS Lib. Was that correct? It was. And I can't seem to get to my email, but I believe Ms. Molly can get it for you. So, um, I can have her share her screen here in just a moment. And that Perfect. will kind of maybe help you with regards you. to that. <clears throat> TSD, Molly needs to be promoted, please. Thank you.
Um, do you mind if I just make a quick comment about the report they're going to put up? I was like, who is talking? Yes. Hello. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so just a couple things quickly, just so it all makes sense to you. Um, the 2023 information does not include the supplemental lit because that information is not available yet. So that amount is normally between two and 300,000. I mean, obviously, I, I can't predict what it will be, but that's the normal. So um, I think the five year average was 248,000. So if that gives you an idea. And then, um, as you know, the um, the Monroe County Local Income Tax Council um, always kind of fluctuates that 0.25%. So it varies between um, PSAP and then public safety. So we just, we're never exactly sure what that will be, um, you know, moving forward. But I did give the best estimate I could. That is quite illegible. So. So, so if you want to look at um, E, column E, um, you can see like the projected um, revenue. And I just did 2% um, to be very, very conservative. So I can't. Oh, I'm sorry, 3%. And you're saying a 2% increase, correct? 3% is 3%. what I estimated. Yeah, we see 2%. Yeah. Column E, line 13 says 2%. We may be looking in the wrong place. That is the percent change from 22 to 23. So okay. I did an I did an estimated 3% increase in the date span receipts for 24, 25, and then 26. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying now? can't really look at the 2022 because it's 11 not even 11 months okay um so, could you i did also include the actual i mean i gave you the 11 months and then i also actual certified lit with supplemental is there as well in blue oh Thank so you're you holding my hand. Okay, so you're saying that what we're anticipating is the three million one point twelve, right? In oh, that's oh, that's oh, okay. I got you. And just for clarity, so for so that you'll know that the um, public safety lit budget that we passed for 2023 is 3,797,175. 3,797,175. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And a reminder that 
was also a deficit budget correct yep, at $291,160 in the red. Yep. Correct. Marty has her hand raised. Could um, I think we better please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, was there, it's hard to look at all this on the screen. I don't have anything, you know, in hard copy, but uh, what was included in the 2023 budget for lit that might've been one time big ticket items that we can get out of there and make room to make sure that we've got the money to give that higher salary increase to the jailers. Um, I'm not looking at that budget mm -hmm. for the lit. So could someone? I, I'm um, currently looking at the budget and hold on just a moment. And oh. if we put any new people in there, we need to just take them out. Because this is tough no. decision. I'll share my screen. Yep. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is the column here. Whoops, because it's merged. Sorry. This column here where it says 2023 requested was what was approved. So, and hold on. So, so the, uh, my question is what, what in there is something new or 2023 that might not have been in there before? Um, what we did add was the, re the retention bonus of in the sheriff's department. Um, there is nothing different from the year before with regards to their budget mm -hmm. in the support. They increased, you know, the travel training by a $1,000. Um, How much the retention bonus, because we can get that out of ARPA. That's not gonna be going, that's not an ongoing expense. It is not. 32,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you took that out, it doesn't mean we wouldn't do it. We would just do it in a different, fashion uh the prosecutor's yeah. office um has split salaries with regards to domestic violence and their sex crimes as well as the uh mm -hmm. and it uh because it's split with a grant so this is the uh, as well as their four thousand dollar retention mm -hmm. um that, that's so that was my uh question early on was let's go through this and look at places where we can remove the expenses from this fund and and fund the jail staff there well um, <clears throat> i have a problem with doing that now because our budget has been approved and all everything's going to finish up in the county and at the state we just can't go redo the budget for 2023 no, right. i think i'm more interested Please. In we certainly can for just we can certainly do that next year at the beginning of the year next year is different mm -hmm. i i would like to ask in public safety lit are there any um right there uh capital items right required? there equipment uh, radios. we have yeah. one in the commissioner's office with regards to uh law enforcement radios of one hundred and sixty-five thousand. um we have a um services in TSD, but that is to help supplement their, you know, the communications with the their yeah. laptops and, and, and such with uh, within right. their the, the vehicles. Um, the courts, we have the security. Um, and then you go to the probation where they have a probation okay. officers um, and their retention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which one? This one? Oh, yes. And we so, did add longevity to the PO, uh, probation officer. Yeah, so that's a, a, 
Something Let's else. Um, so <clears throat> that didn't change from last year. And see, I mean, if we don't take that out of there and move it someplace else, we're just saying, well, those people are more important than the jailers. And I, I don't think that's acceptable. So, I mean, that the, other than the uh, commissioners, there's not another uh, capital item that can be moved, you know, that that's out there. Everything else is it either in supplies or services other than personnel, so. How much more the number in deficit was two? Uh, we, two we were $291,160 in the red in the PS lit fund for the 2023 budget. And then the total fiscal impact on PS lit, if we do a 9% is 41,000. Yeah. So <clears throat> now we, there, there are really healthy operating balance in PS lit. But again, as we've talked about before, we, you know, this is, if we do, if we do 9%, it's going to be going on into the future. And at some point it's just going to, Right. It's going to eat it up. It's going to eat it all up. Mm -hmm. So we need to be really careful right. with how we do this. <clears throat> I, I mean, presuming we do this. Can I zoom out and ask a, a bigger question? Please. <laughs> so we have uh, people wearing the uniform today that are going through this. I think it's helpful to remember this is a, the problem we're trying to solve is retention. And my question to, to you all, if, is it okay if I ask questions of? Yes. All right, thank you. It, what, what level do we move the needle on, on retention? Like how much do we invest to keep guys and folks, excuse me, on staff? I mean, is 9% is a 9% increase enough? I'm seeing, I'm seeing head shake, no. So let me ask a follow-up question. Is 14% enough? Uh, that's a base, that's a base rate of anywhere from 2286 to 2515. I mean, I, I know you can't talk, you can't talk for your entire, you know, negotiating group, but and we just heard from Oliver Winery, they're paying that much for folks making wine. Mm hmm That's right. <clears throat> so uh, for the benefit of those listening to cats, uh, the comment in the back was we, when they heard that Oliver was paying 21 something on average, uh, we had folks in the back saying that they were, they were, that was awfully enticing to them. <laughs> um, and, and so that's, that's part of this question. We heard council member Crossley raise this very issue um, that, that you know, we're, we're trying to solve our attention issue. And so we're threading a needle here. We've got to solve a problem with very little resources. Well, I shouldn't say we have, we are very blessed. We, we have an abundant budget, but still this is, that's, that's the challenge before us. So one thing I'd like to just throw out <clears throat> for you all to think about, and that is <clears throat> maybe, maybe we should be using ARPA uh, for additional bonuses in future years while we still have it. That's through 26. <clears throat> and <clears throat> because we, we can't predict right now what, what's going to happen with uh, public safety lit or the general fund. So maybe we should be looking at larger bonuses rather than um, increasing the base. I certainly respect that decision. I do think that's the I, kind I, of conservative way to look at, you know, to look at it, to the safe maybe way to look at it. Um, I really would like to, to find something that's a little, 
a little bit more um, you know, lasting. <laughs> we just, right. you know, can't just bonus our way <clears throat> to, into so bullying a whole career. Right. You know. So both. Let me just let me just summarize the point and say that for <clears throat> for the general fund and the public safety fund together, the nine percent increase is four hundred and eleven thousand. That's a total okay. for both the jail and the deputies. It just seems like we should be able to pull that off. Huh? It seems like we should be able we to should, pull that off. But then, but then I heard the, the deficit numbers that were just read, and that's almost doubling them. Well, so and and that was yeah. just in PS Lit. the The deficit in the general fund was three point seven million dollars. So again, we have operating balances in that fund. So. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, but but again, we're we're not talking about a one time investment. We're talking about bumping them up for into mm -hmm. into the future, and um, you know that it's going to eat through that operating balance. Mm -hmm. And if you move things from public safety to lit, where are you going to put push it to? You're going to push it to you know general fund. Yes. You know Maybe. that's where it'll be. Yeah. Now, I, I want to clarify, just because I'm like, well, we, you know, we don't have this money, blah, 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 doesn't mean I'm against this. I, I, I want to be really clear here. Like, I think we can do hard things. <laughs> right? We can walk and chew gum. We can, we can figure this out. I, I, I was going to add to that. I said in the last meeting that all of this process for us is, is trying to problem solve it and muddle our way to a solution that works because we wanna honor the service of those who are in here and we wanna continue that. I'm just trying to do math. <laughs> We're in the I say muddle, <laughs> she says math, she's smarter. Um, but the, the, the time that we have, have already spent on this has got us to this, mm -hmm. this level of detail here. Mm -hmm. I think we've got, we're not voting on this tonight because we don't have a solution. We don't have it paid for. But I think we can continue to figure that out by looking into these budgets and figuring out what we do. Uh, ultimately, in, in my wand waving ways, and that's not how it works, but a, a combination of what, which Councillor Munson has laid out really well, Proposal A and a combination of Proposal B, I think does something. Mm -hmm. I think it does more than nothing. And I think we have attempted this year to do some things for every county employee, but we have a problem here. And I think that figuring that out is our, our sort of next course. Mm -hmm. None of this is pretty, but the way counties operate by Indiana law is not clear anyway. It's it, it, the, way, the way that the state has this set up is difficult, but we can figure that out. We have smart folks here, I think, and, and well-intentioned individuals. Um, I just want to make a statement. I mean, you know, you guys said something about, you know, doing using ARPA funds for a bonus for, you know, the next preceding years, but then where's that going to leave people once that With, fund, once it, because after, they, after, after several years, yeah. they're going to be depending on that. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's going to ridiculous. run out Yep. and I, I appreciate the bonus, but in reality, you know, you're, it's not going to be there, you know, after, what is it, 2026 or 2026? Yeah, so, you know, it's like. It's called kicking it down the road. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's called kicking it. So, but it's like. Um, so we, at our next meeting. <laughs> we have to do something. We have to do something. And I think, I mean, our next meeting is also looking at all of ARPA. And we have the commissioners with us discussing so, that. I think that that's going to be a whole lot, but I think that's a good time to really pull apart what is what is it that we want to do with ARPA and how can we fund the other things that are ongoing and need our, our attention every year and not just... Um, you know, in this time of okay. boon because of the <clears throat> pandemic. Yes. 
So I have, I have a thought since we're talking with the commissioners at our next meeting, which is next week. It is. <clears throat> we have a hit on our budget this year. I think it is in, I don't know whether it's general or public safety or both, but our retention bonus for all county employees, that's a 2000 for all employees, totals one point, close to $1.3 million. Mm -hmm. If that were paid out of our budget, how, how whole would be our our public safety and general fund. Can you tell us that tomorrow, Kim? Well, well maybe tonight. not tomorrow. I, I was gonna say, I th I've got that report that you and I worked on. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't have the deficit numbers in front of me. things. I guess if I may to ask a quick question as we're talking about this, does this, <clears throat> excuse me, does this conversation warrant, I guess, public comment because um, I would like to hear maybe from, uh, not maybe, I would like to hear from, I guess, our correctional uh, officers from the collective bargaining unit to see like what their general thoughts are since they haven't spoken to us and we haven't spoken to them since the summer. Um, I would like to, I don't, moral of the story is, I think they should be able to make comment of what they've heard since it's been a lot of discussion. So I just, I'm asking if we can open it up for them. Are there any objections? No, no, that's okay. very good. If anybody in this room would like to make public comment, please come forward to the podium. Um, while they're coming forward, I just want to show you, um, I pulled a report from Lau with regards to um, <coughs> our, share my screen back again, please. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a report out of Lau of what was approved in 2023, and this is the retention bonus report. For the general fund, this amount is $818,500. Hmm. <laughs> That's for the general fund. For public safety, public safety it's $51,500. For longevity that's the longevity amounts for those two funds that's really a big that's a big help mm -hmm. okay so, thank you so. okay um so for public comment um we do need you to state your name and does it need a sign in for this yes that would be nice it's there. protocol sorry yeah <laughs> and um we have three minutes and adjust your mic so your mouth is right in front of it thank you uh, Sergeant Wilson at the jail. Um, as you know, we've been back here listening and everything, and it is kind of frustrating. Um, we hear all this stuff getting approved and approved and approved. And Councilor Munson, Councilor Crossley, do appreciate you guys responding to our emails. I know I sent quite the long email a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Councilor Hawk responded as well, so I do appreciate that. Um, Councilor Munson said something about being conservative, but it seems like the council is only conservative when it comes to funding law enforcement. Everything else we watch getting approved. Uh, we are bleeding. We're constantly working overtime. Three of us are third shift people back here. We worked last night. We worked tonight. So we're running on no sleep and it's constant. Uh, a bonus is great for the people that are there but it's not gonna fix the problem of getting applicants in the door. And I'm sure this, the sheriff's side is the same way. It's great for the people that are there, but when we're not getting applicants or getting quality applicants, we've got to bump that pay or we're not gonna have anybody coming in. We get very few applicants and a lot of the applicants we do get just aren't quality applicants. Um, Colonel Crow's done what he can do to try to get people in. 
we've got a sergeant that's been working on doing things like Indeed, recruiting fairs, things of that nature to try to get people in. But when you have places like Catalan, we have places like Oliver Winery that's paying more than the starting pay of the jail. When you have the outlook of what a lot of people see law enforcement as now, you, people just don't want to do it. We need to have the council, the commissioners, and I'm sorry, I'm really upset that the commissioners were approved a 23% raise when they're only required to work one meeting a month, state law. 23% raise, but you guys are debating a 9% raise for the guys that are working multiple hours of overtime. That's not okay. That's not, if you guys have got to find the funds for us, that's just not okay. Uh, with all due respect to Commissioner Thomas, she says you can't compare other counties when it comes to the commissioner's pay, but that's exactly what you do with our pay every single time we're up. Every single time, well, this county pays this and they're comparable in size, but the commissioners are the fourth highest paid in the state, regardless in size. You guys have got to do better. That's all I've got to say on the issue, but you've got to do better. Thank you. I appreciate your comment. Hello, I'm Sergeant Smith. Uh, I also work at the jail. Uh, I was adding up your guys' uh, figures here. I uh, added up a total for the you know, top of everything, 15% and the $1,000 bonus. My total was $969,471. We'll say a million dollars, right? Are we worth that to you? You guys are going to have your holidays coming up soon? We're not. <clears throat> Currently uh, on our staff, just on third shifts alone, there's at least, I would say, 20 holidays that we're not able to take due to a lack of staffing. Every night, we need shift coverage. Sometimes we run without just to make ends meet. What that means for us is our minimum staffing is eight officers two of which can't leave the control rooms that they're in charge of, potentially one. So if there's any kind of an incident in the facility on third shift, including myself, I have six other officers as my backup. <clears throat> I would say 20% of them might be able to fight if that were to come to be. I don't think you guys understand the, the risks that we're taking here with the minimum staffing and the lack of pay. That's all I got. Think of us whenever you guys are enjoying your, you know, holiday meals. Thank you. Any other? Good evening. I'm just gonna sign in real quick. My name is Lieutenant Finer. I work on the patrol side of the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. I was with you guys last month. Yes. Welcome back. That's a pencil. That's a pencil. Just like to address a couple of things came up during today's discussion. Uh, I appreciate all the hard work put in by, by uh, Council Munson, Council Crosley, all of you guys putting the numbers together. I understand that it's quite an endeavor to hammer budgets and it's something I'm glad that I don't do. Um, with that being said, I, I, when, if you remember our original agenda submission was a request for a 20% pay increase. It's a pretty big ask. Well, uh, someone in our agency asked why we didn't ask for more because we're so underpaid. Now I understand you guys are using the WIS study and I appreciate that the fact that you've went out and gathered information and that you've invested in a system that compares us to similar counties and populations. Fact of the matter is that doesn't affect our problem. Our problem is right here. We are 20 plus percent less, <clears throat> pardon me, paid at base salary starting than both all three sister agencies in the immediate area. So we're basically forcing people to move out of our area to go get a decent wage to catch up with the rest of what the state is paying or 
other cities that have communities like ours to be paid comparably. With the 20% increase that we had asked for, we don't even come close to Bloomington police. We fall just short of IUPD. You can check the numbers. They were given to you before we came in last month. Um, the WIS system does not address the issue here locally. It does not address the issues uh, for, I can't speak for the correction side, but it does not address the salary discrepancy in the local area, which is what's hurting us. That hurts our recruitment to get new applicants. And like Sergeant Wilson said, there's, there's not a lot of applicants to choose from. And if they get, and they wanna to come to Bloomington and work, they're not looking anything past a webpage and starting salary. And we're fourth on that list behind Bloomington, IUPD, Ellettsville, and then the County Sheriff's Office. Um, the 9% pay increase is over last year's salary. That's correct. Just let me know if I'm wrong. And that includes the 5% COLA adjustment over last year's salary. So in essence, it's a 4% increase. We came asking for 20, we're down to four. The $2,000 retention bonus is great for people that are here, but it doesn't fix our problem because $2,000 compared to a 20% pay increase somewhere else means nothing. It's, it's a great way to put a shine on it, but it doesn't fix the issue. The, I got it. The budget is, is your guys to handle and I, I don't do that. But I know that we asked to be in here long before we got in front of you in October, knowing budgets were closing. It's important that you just take a few minutes, I'll be finished here in a second, and just realize the solutions you're proposing, the retention bonuses, a 9% pay increase doesn't fix our problem. That's not why we're here. We're not here because we just want to get a small bump. We have to catch up. We can't get people to apply to us. We can't get people to stay with us, people with rank and experience. It's a, the retention bonus is a band-aid. We have a huge bleed here and we need to stop it before we end up like sister agencies are experiencing the same issues and can't get it fixed. That's my time, I'm over. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Thank you. If there are any um, members of the public online who want to make public comment, you're certainly welcome. Just raise your hand. Is there anyone else in here? Okay. Um, all right. It doesn't look like there's any more um, public comment. And I, oh, there is one. Look at that. Um, Kirsty Compton. Go ahead. Hi, um, I would just like to say that I work day shift and we too are short on staff. And Saturday on my days off, I came into work because we had two hospital transports that we had to send four officers to the hospital with inmates. And I had four officers at the jail to run the whole jail. And that's with one officer in the control room, one officer in central. So two officers on the floor. So we, we, we are facing a very dire time in the jail and it, it is time for somebody to realize we've got a big problem. And, and that's all I've got to say. Thank you, I appreciate that. Any other comment? I don't wanna cut anyone off. All right. Um, we have some thinking to do. We have some number investigating to do. <clears throat> and um, I want to see this on our next agenda. Um, as For the work session? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that we can come up with a solution mm -hmm. that can be implemented quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think this uh, discussion should precede the ARPA discussion? Or I think, think maybe I yeah. think it should, don't you? Mm -hmm. I I I would say yes because mm -hmm. that way then you kind of know mm -hmm. what you're going to be working into yeah. with regards mm -hmm. to ARPA, yeah, and how to handle 
that, <clears throat> so at the same time, I want to be able to communicate with the commissioners about uh, <clears throat> about possibilities of putting this in ARPA and the numbers. Would you help me do that? Yeah, and I do believe that you can add things to the worksheet yeah. and legal has indicated that that's appropriate. And are you talking yeah. about the 2023 bonus into ARPA? Is that what you're saying? Yes, okay. that, <clears throat> that plus um, the countywide bonus plus the <clears throat> bonus for um, jail and share. Okay, for 2022, okay. Mm -hmm. Can I provide just a quick clarification? I just want to make sure that everyone's aware there are two different categories under ARPA that you could use the lost revenue section. And then there's also a um, under public sector capacity, another option. So okay, great. So <clears throat> will you be will you be at our next meeting and can I will. you advise us about this? Yes, I'll be prepared. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. Okay. Any other comment from council? Okay, thank you. I appreciate the information, the presentation, the discussion. It's, it's been good. Um, we're going to move to approval of the minutes. <laughs> okay. Council, I move to approve the September 27, 2022 work session October 4th, 2022 public hearing for the 2023 budget, October 11th, 2022 regular session and first reading of the 2023 budget and October 18th, 2022 second reading and adoption for the 2023 budget minutes as presented. Second. Do we have any council members who would like to change, add, edit, modify, otherwise tear into our minutes? No? Great. Fantastic. Um, we will do a roll call vote then. Actually, you can do a voice vote because you're the ones. Oh, because no one else is actually even participating. Right. Got it. <laughs> You're fine. Um, all right. All in favor of approving the minutes as described by Councillor Deckard, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Motion passes. Um, are there any council comments for today? Go ahead. We've had a we've had a hard meeting tonight, but we are in a beautiful building that has been made more beautiful by our maintenance staff putting up the Christmas tree and putting the most amazing presents beneath the tree that are all sparkly. And I looked at them, I looked inside those boxes, and they are empty. The sparkling boxes, <laughs> but they're they're very attractive nonetheless. And I just want to thank our staff for the for the work they did in in beautifying our courthouse. Yeah, it is pretty fun to have such a beautiful place. Uh, that's it. No, any other? Yes, I'll just again. Um, I know the previous discussion of what we brief or what we briefly oh boy um what we just discussed was it wasn't very easy to sit here to listen to that um but we should be listening to it because you all are dealing with a lot of this on a daily basis um and so i just want to say you know I, i'm sitting here not just dwindling things but making notes of everybody who made public comment and it gives me a lot to think about as all of us um, moving forward, but we we really do have to do something. We just can't keep kicking the can down the needle because then it feels like you guys are getting kicked down, um, and and that's not right. Uh, when I took this position, I took this in a way of knowing that there were going to be some really hard, um, hard conversations, some not so great conversations, um, some maybe good conversations, all that in between. Um, this was very healthy to listen to. Um, and oftentimes we have to sit in our uncomfortableness so that we can get comfortable in making the right decisions. Um, so with that being said, I do appreciate every single last one of you all here tonight. Um, anybody that was paying attention on Zoom or will watch 
via later on cats. I'm sure y'all will tell people to pay attention um, as people should. Um, as electeds, we are supposed to be held accountable for the things that we do. And I think this discussion is a part of that process. So I appreciate all that you have done, um, all that we have talked about and all that we continue to do. Um, also just again, we do today, and speaking of a lot of discussions and conversations, I took out my notes from the Bloomington Chamber of Commerce had a community conversations in regards to um, jail facility. It's no surprise that we're having this conversation um, in addition to what we are reimagining here in our community. And I continue to say that, you know, there's lots of things that we should be having, you know, conversations. Um, and there's a lot of finger pointing of who's not doing what and who's doing what. But the issue is we have a lot that is at stake. And our issue is we already know that our facilities do not need to hold people with mental health issues and substance use disorders and those that are experiencing homelessness. Um, it's been said by Commander Crow in our meetings and other people have said it, they don't want to have to do these things. Um, so we, we, in addition to this conversation, we have a lot in the county that we are really truly working on and we should be listening to. So again, I know um, um, President Wiltz had mentioned that we have our community justice reform committee and the last meeting was by far one of the most public um, attended. And I want to make sure that we are continuing these conversations and we continue to have people come to them because we cannot do, the county cannot do this alone, uh, alone. the city cannot do this alone. It is we and this community, both city and county government bodies alike to put egos and personalities to the side and let's make stuff happen because I'm getting so frustrated and so annoyed and listening to everybody, uh, quite a few people just continue to have chit chat, um, but we're missing the bigger point. Um, so with that being said, again, this upcoming Monday is our community justice reform committee meeting. Anybody paying attention, anybody here this evening that will, that can attend, um, please do because we have a lot to discuss and we should be continuing to discuss. So thank you. Well said, thank you. Um, and with that, um, we will adjourn. <laughs>